Belana Torres was born to a human father and a Klingon mother. As is frequently the case in Star Trek, those factors defined Torres, although differently than most other characters. While some, like Spock and Sela, lean more on their non-human side, Klingon hybrids tend to reject their Klingon aspects frequently, such as Kalar, as well as her and Worf's son Alexander, a brief period during the Dominion War notwithstanding. Torres is in conflict. She has resentment towards her Klingon side. This is no doubt due to the lifelong belief that she lost her father, the one that she idolized, because of the Klingon nature of herself and her mother, as well as the teasing she experienced because of her forehead. Torres primarily sees the Klingon instincts as an enemy, responsible for her explosive temper. But it likely has contributed to a lifelong attitude of walking away. Torres was deeply hurt by her father's departure, and so it wouldn't be at all surprising that her subconscious response to strife is to be the one to walk away first, to end it on her terms rather than on someone else's, most notably leaving Starfleet Academy, where despite some disciplinary problems, she was seen as having real potential. This is a means of asserting control. It was within a couple years of leaving the Academy that Torres was saved by Chakotay and joined the Maquis, ostensibly to have an outlet for her violent emotions. But to be more accurate, Torres found a place where her emotions weren't a liability. She didn't need to walk away because losing one's temper was normal, even if she did so more frequently than others. But while that was the place where she could potentially be as clean as she wanted, she still did not embrace this aspect of herself. On the contrary, her pursuits were just as often technical matters as it was battle. It was during this time that an interesting event occurred. Chakotay used his people's rituals to help Torres encounter her spirit animal. She then attacked it, something unique according to Chakotay. The details of the situation aren't known, but on the presumption that this spiritual journey is a form of confronting one's subconscious, it is indicative of the self-loathing that Torres has battled with. She doesn't want to be what she is, yet it is always there in the mirror staring back. Obviously, this is most apparent in the episode Faces from Season 1, when Torres is split into two beings, and the two halves of herself must literally get along despite the animosity they have. What is notable about that episode is neither one does feel like the regular Torres, yet both feels like they are in a way Balana Torres. She truly is a fusion of both of these people. It's from this that the lesson is obvious that Torres needs both halves of herself, despite the frustration that this causes her when her Klingon aspects get in the way when around a human majority population, whether on a ship, in Starfleet, or on the colony where she was raised. Of course, that was less of an issue when she was with the Maquis. And we also discover that the relationship with the Maquis was more than just that for her. She developed genuine friendships with those people, as we saw in Extreme Risk. She used the holodeck to externalize the internal pain that she feels over all those who were lost while she survived. Most memorably, when she jumped from orbit with little regard for her safety. It was, again, a way of her establishing control. Fine, I'm going to feel pain, but I will only feel pain on my terms. Being stranded in the Delta Quadrant was probably the best thing that could have happened to her. Out here, with nothing but Voyager and its crew, there was nowhere left for Torres to run away to, and the people she raged at would still be there tomorrow, next week, next year, probably ten years from now. At the same time, she was given challenges and opportunities, and was someone she respected like Jacote to encourage her positive traits and to discourage her negative ones. Her legendary Klingon temper became less and less of an issue for her. Not ending, certainly, but revealed instead as a consequence of resisting her lifelong impulse to release her rage. When we look at her relationship with other members of the crew, some things reflect back upon her. For instance, her resentment of Seven of Nine was at least partially a projection of her own self-loathing. It's more than likely that there were times when Torres made mistakes while fighting with the Maquis, 
maybe even killed innocents by mistake. As discussed with Dreadnought, while facing the reprogrammed missile, the Torres of the present was in a way facing the Torres of the Maquis days, who was fine with using a weapon of mass destruction. Combine that with her history of raging at others and walking away when the going got tough, and it's no surprise that she would resent Seven her lack of guilt over past events, while she herself was confronted by her own. Likewise, the doctor's perfect family rubs her the wrong way, and with his permission, she makes changes to make it more realistic. Yet the result is a dysfunctional mess where love has been replaced with endless strife, and it all ends in tragedy. A telling bit of insight if that is Tora's idea of what a typical family is. Her relationship with Chicote, who is 17 years her senior, is likely a fulfillment of the need for an absent father. The first time they met, he protected her. After that, he was there for her in the way that her biological father wasn't. Even the fact that she at one point had a fantasy of sleeping with him doesn't diminish this, as it is quite common for an actual sexual relationship to develop under these circumstances, especially for someone with a, such a complex history around the various emotions of love and needing to sort them out. This, however, opens the door to the most important relationship of all, that with Tom Paris. As Day of Honor showed, when push came to shove, his feelings for her was that she was fascinating, in an I-want-to-learn-all-there-is-to-learn-about-you kind of way. This was perhaps why he was able to break her cycle. She would say things to push him away, but all the complexities that drove her to do that were what caused him to come back every time. Because that can come across as seeming rather stalkerish, let's clarify that to say it wasn't a case of him making a move, her rejecting him, and him returning despite her wishes. Rather, it was a case that the two would be together, and then her previous cycle of leaving before the other person leaves, or in this case, compelling him to leave, kicks in. Both of those are essentially the same. They are a way of asserting control. The incident that finally brought it all to a head was in Day of Honor when the pair were trapped in space and running out of oxygen. At that moment, she finally broke the cycle because she realized the cycle she'd been trapped in. In Revulsion, set three days after that episode, Paris finally addresses what happened by giving her a way out. She can back out from the words that she said, I love you, because they were moments away from when they thought they were going to be dead. He wouldn't hold it against her. But Torres does not seize the opportunity that Tom offers, interrupting him, in fact, to flat out state she meant what she said. Coming face to face with her own mortality and looking back on her failures, the most she can do is entertain the possibility that Tom might want to be the one to back out. But this time, it will not be her. She refuses to be the one to push him away. All she does is give him a chance to leave if that's what he wants. Now realize the significance of that. Her actions have all been about asserting control so she can't get hurt. Or if she gets hurt, she gets hurt on her terms. Now, when the biggest prize is on the line, she offers Tom total control. This relationship continues or ends based solely on what you want. Tora's relationship with Tom during the rest of the voyage home is hardly smooth going, but most of the time there is an honest effort on her part not to allow herself to fall into the bad habits of the past. Yet as we discover in Lineage, it still is there beneath the surface, the fear that after breaking the cycle with Tom, one day he's going to walk away from her and won't come back. Her actions in that episode speak of the depths of her fear, the lengths that she goes to in order to avert the future that she fears, as well as to establish control over it. Tom's assurance that he won't ever leave her is what she has to accept. In this case, the jump he is asking her to make was far greater than one even from orbit. But after she had grown over the series, it was a leap of faith she was finally prepared to make.